There are conflicting reports about a possible ceasefire in the works in the Middle East. Joining us is BNC's chief foreign affairs correspondent and co-host of The World Tonight. We need her. Nayara Huck joins us right now. Nayara, good morning. Uh, what are you hearing? What's the latest? Uh, we are hearing, as you said, conflicting reports. So the challenge with a ceasefire is that both parties have to actually want it. Now, civilians, absolutely, Palestinian and Israeli, mm -hmm. want the attacks to stop. But Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has made it very clear that he wants to run a campaign that roots out the terrorist organization Hamas. Meanwhile, Hamas wants to continue uh, to project itself as a group that is defending all Palestinians. Uh, Hamas is also supported by Iran and other uh, Middle East terror networks. So it's not really in their interest to end this conflict. It is in the interest of the United States and others around the world, and that's where the quiet diplomacy really comes in. Uh, White House Press Secretary mm -hmm. Jen Psaki said that President Biden's been doing this long enough to know that the best way to end an international conflict is typically to not debate it in public. But Mike, here's the thing. I think the American mm -hmm. public wants this debate in public. We want to understand mm -hmm. what the U.S. government is doing about this. Yeah, we're saying one thing. Uh, we need the politicians to say more. Democrats seem to be either on the fence, just mm -hmm. asking for ceasefires, but at the same time, uh, you have somebody like Nancy Pelosi who's still blaming the Palestinians for starting this and Israel uh, for defending themselves, but also asking for a ceasefire. You got Democrats who's saying they need a ceasefire, but you got the Republicans who's locked up in with the Israelis. But outside of taking away aid from them, how much influence really uh, does the U.S. have when it comes to Netanyahu, who you said is already on this campaign? And that, right, this, this is where it, it, uh, it, it is, is ultimately the problem about power. Like, this is really all about who has power and how are they going to use that power. So the idea of asking for a ceasefire or supporting it isn't going to happen. The United States really, if it wants to see an end to this and be the leader in the world on human rights issues, is to push for it, to really be as aggressive a negotiator as Netanyahu is. I mean, it's in, in many circles, it, it, people are talking about uh, the United States being rolled by Netanyahu, that he's taken advantage of this moment. And this was supposed to be a moment of the United States coming back on the world stage getting credibility about human rights, standing up for the little guy, leading by example. And this is this is U.S. credibility on the line right now. Yeah, Nayara, it's the civilian casualties for me. Um, I was in the military. I understand there are casualties of war. I understand uh, there are going to be people who die that that aren't uh, part of the military. But 217 dead last I saw in Palestine, 63 children, 58,000 uh, displaced. 12 dead in Israel, 11 of those are civilians. Are they hitting any of their intended targets? Uh, it seems like they were seeing and hearing so many about the civilians. What about the intended targets, the, the, the soldiers that they're trying to kill in, in this instance? They, I mean, it just doesn't seem like it's, it's matching up. A, 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 from the Israeli Defense Force perspective, um, they are hit, hitting uh, their defended targets. They say that Hamas uses civilians and human shields. Uh, and that's one step removed from saying effectively it's OK to have civilian casualties because it's Hamas that is making them the civilian casualties. That's some of the rhetoric to mm. really keep an eye out for uh, when you hear about this human shield narrative. I will say this, though. Hamas blatantly says the quiet. I mean, they're not keeping it quiet. They're just saying it. They do believe Hamas as a terrorist organization does believe that Israel should be wiped off the face of the earth. It is part of their charter. So uh, the capabilities is really where it's different. Uh, Hamas does not have the capability of doing what they say they want to do. Israel, absolutely. They have leveled 94 buildings in Gaza. They mm -hmm. eat 58,000 people displaced, uh, hundreds of thousands now refugees in their own territory. Mm -hmm. There is a blockade on Gaza right now. You can't you can't get fi if you're a fisherman, you can't fish in the sea because Israeli warships mm -hmm. are blocking you from making a living. So uh, the the language may be uh, a little bit imbalanced, but the activity and the ability to really do harm uh, is, is, you know, with Israel and its fighter jets and the U.S. military aid.
Yeah, running water, health issues. Uh, the U.S. Uh, still selling missiles at the same time they're asking for a ceasefire. It seems like it's, it doesn't match up in that si situation either. Uh, the U.N. Uh, issued a statement about the violence. Uh, what, what stuck out to you about that statement? Um, the, the part that really struck me was that uh, that two million people have nowhere to go in their own mm. in their own area. Like they're they're isolated from the rest of the world. We have had uh, the United Nations, several mm. humanitarian groups, call Gaza an open air prison camp. That's what they and it is wow. like uh, of the likes that we have never really seen or experienced because we're, we're used to seeing them in smaller spaces. But this is an entire city of people surrounded by barbed wire, blockaded, no enter, no free entry in and out. They are now really all the United Nations is asking for at this point is please open up some passageways, allow us, yeah. the humanitarian community, to bring in supplies to help these people. This is yes. also the danger of uh, having uh, media kicked out and systemically silenced in Gaza, is that we don't, outside of some UN inspectors, we don't really have a full accounting of what's happening. We have rhetoric from both sides, and the rhetoric is really getting heated, uh, especially as you see videos going on online. And so we, we need facts, uh, and the fact that we have mm. right now show that it is disproportionately Palestinian civilians mm. who are suffering mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, there is a humanitarian crisis that existed even before this latest round of airstrikes. You know, with the airstrikes, no running water, unsanitary conditions, uh, people being displaced. It's, it's just a sad situation. You wonder when uh, or if it will ever end. BNC's Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent, Nayara Huck. Uh, we will see you on The World tonight, of course, throughout the day, right here on BNC. Thank you so much.